Hello there and welcome to this video. Uh, this weekend I was asked to sit in with some friends of mine. They had a, a gig this weekend and they wanted me to sit in on Panama by Van Halen, which I thought was super fun and super cool and way outside of my wheelhouse. So I spent a lot of time practicing it, to learn it, to feel like I could play it in front of other people. <laughs> uh, and I thought I wanted to do a playthrough video, but there's so many playthrough videos of this song in particular, especially on YouTube, that I didn't want to just do a playthrough video. So what you're going to see is the third take of me playing through the song uh, with all of kind of my little things on it. And uh, then I'm going to break down some of the bits I thought were tricky about it and then and cool. And then I'll give you a brief overview of how I dialed in some Eddie-ish tones just for practicing it. Uh, and I'll, I'll show you kind of the techniques I use to practice it as well. <laughs> So first I just wanted to talk about some of the techniques and pieces of this song that I found particularly tricky to get right and or to get consistent. 
Um, the first thing I realized is my pick slide is terrible, um, <laughs> especially compared to, to Eddie's. It's not something that I really do ever. Um, but yeah, you listen to it, it's a very distinctive. <laughs> and mine's not very good. I, hopefully that's a little bit better. <laughs> Before it was not very good at all. Um, and kind of what I've found works for me now is to just think about being more aggressive, pushing down on the string. Um, and then kind of what Eddie seems to do is like a, a scrape and a slide with the fingers. So something like, something like that. Um, and I think as long as I remember to really dig in with my right hand with the pick on the string, then it sounds okay enough for me. So the next thing that I found pretty tricky is uh, after the intro, well, there's multiple parts to the intro, but after it goes to that C minor chord and does the harmonic there, that I struggle to get very consistent. And what you really have to think about is the motion of your right hand and really where you want to do it. There's multiple different places along the string, along the pickup that can get you different harmonic sounds. I'll, I'll demonstrate that now. So if I, I'm playing this note right here, the B, and I'm trying to get a pinch harmonic. So if I play it in different spots, it sounds different. Listen. And I, what I hear in the song and what I was going for was like that really high harmonic, like shrieky kind of thing. And so I think I kind of found a spot over the middle pickup on my guitar, but you're going to have to experiment. Depends on scale length, depends on, you know, what kind of gauge strings you have. I think probably more scale length. I don't know. Don't quote me on that. Um, but just experiment. Just sit here with one note like that and, and try to do your pinch harmonic. It's good practice for getting the, 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 rub on your thumb technique down and, and just find a good spot for it. And then honestly, when you're trying to perform it, just look at the guitar. <laughs> at first, it's okay to just look and see, okay, I'm supposed to be right here, about there to get that pinch harmonic. And that works for me. Now, the next thing that I found uh, particularly tricky was the classic sort of like motif of the whole song is that harmonic riff that happens. <laughs> And even there, you can hear I didn't quite get that first harmonic. So what's going on there is uh, you're you're picking you're picking this pattern twice. The E, the what is that? E flat, <laughs> and then the B. So E E flat B. Pick it with the open string. I don't know what Eddie does, but then after twice. After doing that twice, you do the harmonics that correspond to that, which is uh, the E string on the on the fifth fret there, and then two on the four. This is not a tutorial for how to play the song, but I'm just calling out that actually getting that fifth harmonic for some reason, jumping to that in the song at tempo, I found very difficult, and I had to practice that over and over again, just getting the. <laughs> And, and I found I had to actually think about, when I play it, I have to think about, okay, ring finger needs to go to that spot. Like I have to actively think about ring finger to that harmonic, or I just don't get there in time and I don't hit the harmonic quite cleanly. Now, the other, uh, the last, I think, thing that is kind of <laughs> just crazy and is, is an eddyism, uh, but it's actually not that hard, is really the main lick in the solo, I think. Um, and that is, well, I'll just play it for you slowly. Uh, it's, it's this part. And it's really not that crazy. It's, it's really just a blues thing. And that's the Eddie thing right there is he does a hammer on and a pull off and then goes to the... but it starts with a normal blues lick. So it's mostly a blues thing, straight pentatonic kind of minor box, um, but it's at tempo, it sounds great. It 
gives you that sense of like being out of time a little bit. I don't know if I'm really pulling it off 100%, but based on what I can hear and what I see from others, that's really what he's doing is this. So anyways, I thought that was pretty cool. I definitely had to practice it very, very slowly and build up the speed uh, over and over and over again and, and just do it a lot of times before I felt like, yeah, I can do this most of the time when I when I reach for it. Uh, I'm sure it will fade and I'll have to practice it again if I ever want to play this song again. The other bit in the solo that I found really hard to hit consistently, um, it's not technically difficult. I guess it is kind of technically difficult. It's not like a super shreddy thing, but it's this, it's this second hand tapping thing that he does. <laughs> Now, the reason it's difficult is not because you're moving particularly quickly or because the movements are particularly hard, but getting it precise and getting it consistently pre precise is the difficult thing. And what I mean by that is hitting the right pitch. So like, if I play it wrong, it does not sound good at all. I apologize for that, <laughs> right? But you, you have to really just, it's a, it's, a, really just a bend practice, sort of an exercise that you do, you know? So that was the other thing that I found pretty difficult and I had to practice a lot. So yeah, let me know if those are hard for you or not hard for you. Uh, those are the things that I found challenging, but also cool because now I feel like I kind of added them to my repertoire a little bit. And this is why we learn new stuff so that we get better and improve and uh, have more fun playing the guitar. Now, before we get into the fractal tones, uh, I wanted to just shout out a couple of things that I forgot to shout out. First is the Boss Waza Air headphones. Um, they were really, really helpful for me practicing this thing. When you just need to do repetition after repetition after repetition, um, I could do this and not annoy anyone around the house. I could walk around the house. I could do it while I was watching TV. I could take it with me on a trip and practice. Um, and, you know, the sounds are what they are. They're fine for practicing. Uh, but there is a brown amp model in there, and it kind of did the thing. It worked for me practicing this song. So, yeah. Really, really cool, kind of expensive, but very, very cool. I like it, um, Boss Waza Air, shout them out. The other thing I wanted to shout out uh, that really helped me practice this is, first I went to go make myself a backing track and very quickly got annoyed trying to make a backing track. And that's because the record is not on the grid. Absolutely not on the grid. They hit record and they played it and it was rock and roll and it was great And there are points in the song where it really makes a lot of sense when they're coming out of the bridge and they're doing that dun 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 the chromatic lineup um, As soon as they hit that second note on the chromatic walk up They they rush he, he totally starts rushing and it speeds up that whole section until it gets to the Panama part and it totally works. In the record, it sounds way better than if you just played it to a click. If you play it to a click, it sounds just like it's dragging. So anyways, that's neither here nor there. It did make it very difficult for me to make a backing track though, along with the other track. So what I ended up actually doing, and this is the thing I wanted to shout out, is lalal.ai. Uh, it was amazing. I, I took the recording of Panama that I had, I dropped it in here, and I said extract guitar. And it gave me a track with just the guitar, and it gave me a track without the guitar. Uh, and I could just play along and practice um, with that backing track without the guitar, and it was super amazing. And uh, the other thing I'll just say is uh, I also used an app on my phone called Amazing Slowdowner. Shout out to that too. I, I basically took the track I got from Lalal and threw it into Amazing Slow Downer. And uh, I'll show you on the screen. It, it basically let me uh, change the pitch because I was going to play it in standard tuning, not E flat. So I could bring the pitch up a semitone. I could slow it down. I could loop sections. And I could do it all on my phone with the Waza Air while I was traveling or whatever, wherever I was. I could just walk around the house or walk around wherever uh, and be looping sections that were difficult for me and, and practicing them. So yeah, shout out to La La AI and Amazing Slow Downer app. There's tons of apps for slowing down music, but that's that's what I used. And yeah, that worked for me. All right, let's talk tones. Um, I just want to preface this by saying I'm, I'm not trying to give you like the perfect 
record matched eddy tone. That's not what we're going for. Well, what I, all I needed was a tone that vaguely resembled an, an eddy type of thing, uh, and specifically this track. So we didn't go hardcore into it, although, you know, it's, I had fun learning about kind of what the elements of the tone were. I'm not going to claim this is the best preset. I will upload it if you want to check it out, but um, I'll walk through a few of the amps that I tried and I'll just kind of show you what I've got here. So um, the first amp that I tried actually was the uh, 5053, which is the 5050 model, I, I think. This totally works, but I found that it was just, it's a different tone. The 90s Eddie tone is different. It's a little bit more modern, tighter, more saturated. It's not really like this era, the Panama era of Eddie, at least I found. Um, another amp that I tried, if I switch, I think I'll switch the cab to another amp that I tried. I think Brett Kingman has a video about using this uh, model in the X effect. <laughs> is the Plexi 50 Watt 6CA7. I don't know what any of that means. Uh, I don't know what 6CA7 means. I assume it's a certain type of tube somewhere. Let's check out, maybe we can find where that where that is. Maybe that's a power tube. Yeah, 6CA7, okay, so it's just a different power tube uh, in a Plexi. Um, I don't know anything about that tube, so don't quote me on this, but this, this was pretty good, I th and I, I used this for a while. <laughs> Now, it's good, it sounds good. For me, you notice the, the drive is, is dimed <laughs> uh, and there's, there's no master volume. I could have used like some input boost probably, um, but for me, it just didn't have enough gain for me to play comfortably because I'm not as good as Eddie. Um, so your mileage may vary, but it does sound good. Maybe hitting it with a boost pedal for like a solo or something would have been the way to go. What I ended up doing, and I'll switch the cab back now so we can play, um, is going with the Friedman, the Friedman Brown Eye. Um, I don't know about the V1, V2, V3 models in the Fractal, but this is the model I went for. Basically dimed it uh, in terms of the tone stack and the master volume, and then I backed off the, the drive to like what was sort of controllable for me. <laughs> Uh, and that works for me. It sounds, you know, vaguely eddy. It's got enough gain for me to feel comfortable doing the thing. Uh, oh, and there's one thing I, I forgot to mention, uh, and it's it's kind of important. I don't know. Well, let's play with it. We'll play with it here, and we'll see if it's important. And that's the Variac. Um, and a lot of people will say this is like the whole thing with the brown sound is, is using the Variac. And it may very well be. I don't have a real Plexi in a Variac here to test it. Um, but maybe let's just hear what it sounds like uh, if I play the same riff and then change the very X setting. So I'll do that now. if you could really hear very much difference there. I heard a little bit, I heard a little more like, as the Variac, as we were removing the Variac, so closer to 100%, it was getting more sort of like bottom end, I felt like fuller, rounder, maybe, maybe like, I don't know. These these words, these superlatives are, are so dumb because I don't explain anything, but uh, it felt that way for me. It felt thicker, maybe a little more saturated um, and tighter mostly just tighter, like the, the response of the amp felt tighter at 100% than it did down at 70%, which is where I have it for the preset. Um, and you could see a big difference in this B plus um, meter, whatever that is. I don't know what it's measuring, but at, you probably noticed as I was turning it up, uh, the B plus meter was doing, was, was 
having less decibels <laughs> going down. And I don't know what that means, so that would be interesting uh, to look up. If anyone, if you know what that B plus parameter, that meter is, is telling us, uh, please tell me. I'm guessing it has something to do with, with bias, like compression or something, like power amp compression, power supply compression. Total guess, but if you know, please let me know or point me to a forum post or something like that. But yeah, that's that's basically it. I dialed up the Friedman. Uh, Variac was at 70%. I'll just put it right back, right at 70. And then delay-wise, um, I'm using, for reverb, I'm using the Sun plate. Um, I think that's a Sunset Studios type of plate. I don't really know. A um, little bit of that plate, really any plate reverb sounds fine, but the Sun plate actually sounds great, so recommend it. And then I've got a dual delay thing going on. Uh, I don't know if you can hear that. Just a little bit, tick tock, um, right around 300 something milliseconds, 500 milliseconds. Just doing a little bit of like, da da. It's not really in there very much. Uh, it just, you want that kind of like hop. You want that gallop thing. Like Eddie had that kind of, it's not a dotted eighth, but it's like almost the same tempo every song <laughs> for some reason. And it just kind of had that like gallopy, it added like a gallop sort of in nature. I'm gonna stop saying gallop, gallop. Um, yeah, so anyways, nothing too crazy, really just uh, the Friedman and then a dual delay and, the, and the, the plate amp. And really you don't need a, you don't need the dual delay. Really if you, if you have any delay, you can dial it in about 350-ish milliseconds and that'll give you kind of the thing, at least to me, that's what I'm hearing. It'll get you in the ballpark and make you feel like you can get, uh, get the Van Halen out a little bit, if that's what you're looking to do. So anyways, uh, that's this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. If you made it this far, I really, really appreciate it. Uh, I will upload this preset to Axe Exchange. You can check it out. And uh, once again, if it sounds good, it is good.